My name is Jeff Barkley. I'm a makeup effects artist. Today we're doing a panel on uh, budget makeup effects. Basically makeup uh, itself, effects makeup, is very expensive. You go with silicone, you go with foam latex, they're all pretty expensive. You need molds. Today I'm going into, we're going to deal with gelatin. Gelatin was popular in makeup probably in the 30s and then got a resurgence again probably in the 80s, 90s. Lord of the Rings used it for the noses and ears, um, pointed, nose, pointed ears. So it's got a resurgence. It works good. It's it's flexes like skin. It works kind of like a, a cheap version of silicone. It's not as light as foam latex, but it's all affordable. So basically, you can go and go to the store, buy some. It doesn't have to be this brand. It could be a store brand. Um, it's unflavored gelatin. You'll go onto a lot of um, a lot of websites and they're using gelatin and water and gelatin and that's it. That's not the way to go. I'm going to be doing one makeup with the water and gelatin, but water and gelatin, since it's water, it will evaporate. The gelatin will get hard. It'll start to peel off and crack. You want to generally use it on a part of your body or a part of your face that's not going to get a lot of movement, you know, forehead, whatever. Um, gelatin can also be besides water you mix in some glycerin with it it makes it a lot more flexible lasts a lot longer if you were making uh, professional gelatin prosthetics or props like a full head or a brain you wouldn't use any water at all it would be glycerin it would be sorbitol uh, adding into it to make it uh, last and I have a, I have a gelatin hand that I made probably a good 15 20 years ago it's still flexible so the uh, the gelatin comes in little packets like this, about a tea, uh, sorry, a tablespoon inside here, maybe a little less. Um, what you want to do is mix this. If you were doing it straight, just water and gelatin, like I said, it's not the best, but it's good for photos. Okay, um, it's it uh, it will eventually dry up and shrink. But you want to do an equal amount of water and gelatin. So let's start. I'm just going to pour the whole thing in here. We'll just use a, a whole packet. It's easier. And you want hot water. As hot as you can get that's not boiling. And I eyeball everything, so it's kind of um, an iffy thing, but you should do an equal amount. You can always add more water. And if you can see it's mixing. It stinks a little bit like a wet dog, fish, I don't know. Uh, if you want this to stay on a little longer, you can put a layer of spirit gum or some adhesive. I don't like spirit gum uh, right where you're going to be putting this. So I need to take my glasses off for this. Hopefully I can see what I'm doing. And you're just going to start layering it on. Again, like I said, I'm just going to be, this one is with the straight water mix, so I don't want to do a big elaborate scar. I'm sorry. will be a little bit gooey and the more it sets the less you have to play with it okay. it's really hard doing this in the camera you know that to myself I can usually do it without looking but oh look I got on my glasses stick with that for now just for also you don't have to have a really nice spatula popsicle stick that I sanded okay so once it's not 
it, once it stops being a, uh, really sticky, then you put makeup on it. And this one we're just going to go with a cut. I have these little makeup, cream makeup, so you can use uh, whichever, whatever your favorite brand is. Okay. You know what? Let's do it this way. So this is a healed over scar. I guess this would be good for a pirate, huh? A typical pirate. Or if you just need cuts. Now, if you do it... If you're still playing with it when it's uh, it's a little runny, you can still you can make a, a cut in the middle of it. And because I only used water on this, I, over time it will start to dry, so it could actually start puckering and give you a little more realistic look. This is, since this is about makeup on a budget, I always try to, if I'm going to be doing like bruises and stuff, if you don't have the cream makeups, buy the cheapest eyeshadow kit you can buy. You know, like the, the ones for little girls that have red and blue and yellow. This one's missing yellow, but it'll work. Okay. If this were a little fresher, Add a little red around it. Give it a little bit of bruising around it if it were fresher. Generally, if you put the powdered eyeshadow on the uh, gelatin, it's going to dry it up. So it's just like regular powder, it's going to dry up the moisture. So that was number one way to do gelatin. It's still going to stay flexible for a while, but it will start to dry out. And like I said, once it gets starts gelling, you can't play with it anymore. You can always mix up a new batch and put on top of it. All right. It's also uh, nice to know your own face when you're doing the makeup. If I did this without a mirror, I could probably do it a lot faster than I'm doing it because I'm in the camera. So. So let's get some more gelatin. This time I'm going to add glycerin to it. And the, the reason for the glycerin is that if you use it on a fleshier part of your face or something that has more movement, such as your cheek area or you know, corners of your eyes, the glycerin gives it a little more flexibility so it's not going to dry out um, 
and it'll last a lot longer, especially if you're doing this at a convention. Now the one thing with gelatin also is, if it's a really hot day, like it is here in Southern California on a regular basis, it can melt on your face. So, so what I'm doing is I'm just pouring the gelatin in, now I'm taking some glycerin. Generally, the general um, for doing it this way is a tablespoon of gelatin, a quarter teaspoon of glycerin, and then little bit less than a tablespoon of water. I probably put even less than that, maybe half a tablespoon. Glycerin also make it a little gooier uh, when you're working with it. Also if you make it too runny, you can always add more um, gelatin to it. I'm also going to do this, which I should have done while it was in powder form first. I'm going to add a little bit of color to it. So I'm just going to take probably this light pink color, scrape that into it. Now you can't see it, but I'm just, I'm just taking my uh, stick and scraping powder into the gelatin and maybe just a little bit of the rust color. That'll give me a base color to work with instead of just yellow. Okay. Uh, no, not good. So I'm going to spread this around. This is going to create some skin texture. I've had a little bit in my mustache, but it's fine. The skin can melt into that. Now, if you have enough time, you also want to blend the edges a little bit. Um, create a hole for a big wound. Let's build up on this too. I'm going to add a little bit more water. Again, this has to be hot water, not cold. You can use this to make burns, you can use it to make open wounds. Another trick is to, if you can get it just right, we pull it and string it over itself. And you get almost like a Freddy Krueger burn. Again, it's also hard with glasses on. If you're doing this for a professional prosthetic, you start with a mold, you'd mix in your sorbitol and your glycerin, and you heat it up and melt it in the, in the microwave, no water at all, and uh, keep mixing it and heating it, adding color to it, and, uh, and then when it sets, you can just like make little cubes with it or whatever and then remelt it when you need it. And when you melt it down, then you can apply it. Uh, I'm sorry. Then you can pour it into a mold when it's fully melted. And then when you take it out, you have a prosthetic uh, that you can glue on like a regular foam latex prosthetic or a silicone prosthetic. So it's pretty much set. Also, Technically, you could make your own molds, take a flat piece of wood or glass, sculpt on it with some clay, um, and then this is just regular silicone caulking mixed with cornstarch. If you silicone caulking by itself, it's, it dries from the outside in, so it may not, it may take, you know, weeks for it to dry on the inside. But I'm, uh, this one was cornstarch and silicone caulking, 
I mixed it up and I put on a thin layer, painted it on, and then when that started gelling up, I put another thin layer until I got uh, at least a quarter of an inch thick, maybe three eighths of an inch thick. Now you have a mold. Then you could coat that with Vaseline and you could take your, your gelatin uh, mix that you heat up, pour it in there, take a scraper or a, a popsicle stick, scrape the edge off or the uh, excess off. And then when that sets, you powder it, peel it off and you have with a uh, prosthetic with an edges that you can glue on at that point and still gelatin. And the other good thing about gelatin is that let's say when you're done with it, if, it's, if you're not doing the water base, if you're doing the other one, is that you can wash it off and remelt it and use it again later. You can't do that with silicone, you can't do that with foam latex, but you can use it later. All right, so and the gelatin is, uh, you wanna use cream makeup or rubber mask grease. Like I said, you can't use the eyeshadow on it because it will um, start to dry it out. So again, I just can just take these. Where's my sponge? I also <coughs> recommend not using a complete wedge. I always rip my wedges, tear off the hard edges, and it gives you some texture to work with when you're uh, applying the makeup. I'm not wrong, cheek. Yeah, working with the, using the using the monitor as a as a mirror is like messing me up. I'm used to going the opposite direction. All right, so I got a pretty nasty burn there. You just want to add some other colors to it. I will base in some maroonish. You can tell the hot, the heat melted my makeup and separated. You know, I'm going to get a mirror. Sorry. putting some maroon in where it would be kind of raw flesh. Bear in mind the uh, depth. So the deepest areas, you never go with black unless you've got a huge, huge deep hole. Um, so the deepest areas are going to be darker and as you get to the higher spots you're going to leave those or put some lighter color on it okay. let's go with there we go nice ugly mustard color I also have a habit of just using the same brush, especially when I'm doing these kind of demonstrations. Okay. And this is just going to go around, you're just adding the color to, uh, for disgustingness, because uh, it's going to be a little more yellow in the areas where the fat is. The idea, as I say in all my 
demos. The idea of makeup color of the colors of makeup is to color, not to cover. So you don't want to make sure it's all one color because then it's going to look bad. You have different colors. Um, the uh, prosthetics, on the other hand, are for covering and you know making a new character. So, and you definitely should be. Um, using creams, like I said, because you don't want this drying out. After you powder, you can powder it and then do it, but it's not going to last as long. But it will make it so you're not greasy anymore. So I'm going to take a little bit of this yellow mustard color. And I'm going to take a little bit, just a tiny bit of black, and mix it up. And it's kind of gross. And I'm just going to go along the outside edges. A lot of times, you, nobody's going to see a lot of these little details you put on there. But they help when you're in close-up and you, you know it's going to break it up a little more. Alright, so i got this kind of a Freddy Krueger burn going. Got this other scar. See. If you just want to do bruises, and like I said, you're using your really cheap. I go to the dollar store for sometimes to get these. Not always there, but you can usually find something close. Um, or you can try, like I said, try to find the, uh, the ones they put out for little girls, so you know, around Christmas time. All right, so. Oh, I'll just do a little bruising. I always like to start with red, a reddish color. You want you don't want pure red. But you want a reddish based color. Okay. A little bit of a blue. You can go a little bit to the outer edges of your bruise. Unless, of course, it's a, an older bruise, then you're going to get a lot more blue in there. Get some green. Aging. And want to make a high spot, high point, you use the lightest color you have. I wouldn't go pure white, but go with something. I don't know if you can see it that well. All right. And just an added effect for anything else. You put red, line your eyes in red, and it makes you a little more sickly. like I'm on my way for zombie makeup which you can also do also also do also you can also do um, so with the gelatin makeup you can do scars you can do burns you can do props you can do um, I guess almost anything you can do with silicone or foam latex except for full masks gelatin is going to be a little heavy for that so <clears throat> just to recap for right now this scar was done with just water and gelatin. It will, you can, it's already drying up. I can feel it pulling my skin a little bit. Um, it's already drying up. It's good for photos. It's good for one quick scar, not on a, not on a, not on a 
place that you're going to be have a lot of movement. This one is made with water and glycerin and gelatin. It's a lot more flexible, feels softer, um, will last a lot longer. It's not going to dry out. And then if you were making a prop or ears or nose or some kind of prosthetic, use no water. Um, I'm sure there's lots of recipes on on uh, line that everybody uses a different different recipe, but uh, sorbitol, glycerin, and gelatin, and you melt it all together. It's also like a hot lava. You can pour it into a mold, or you can pour it in and save it later, like an ice cube mold, or you can pour it into a mold that you've made and make prosthetics out of it, or a prop, or whatever, like a brain. Uh, and that'll work. There's a lot you'll also see on T on the uh, not on TV on YouTube and of other other places. People are using their own, making their own scar wax, derma wax, and that's good to do for photos only. I would say because if you're doing it, and you'll notice a lot of people have it as a photo, or they have their hand against the black background, or whatever. If they have a cut off finger, wax is okay, but it has no movement. I mean, you put it on your forehead, and you're not going to wrinkle up your forehead, it'll work. But if you're doing it on your face, it will eventually peel off. Uh, latex is another thing that you can use. I would, you could also seal your, seal your gelatin with latex. Latex doesn't breathe, though, and also has a lot of ammonia. So you get near your eyes, it's not a good thing. It takes a while to dry. Uh, I was going to show you some, but I don't really don't have the time on this. I only have less than an hour to do this. Um, but the the latex, you can also build up texture on your face with, uh, you mix cornmeal and latex, you do tissues and latex. Um, like I said, you'll see a lot of those online. Uh, just bear in mind who's making the video, whether it's good or not, you know, or whether it's good for you or not. Um, latex also is not one of the cheaper things, but it is, it is on the cheaper end of the makeup effects uh, scale. Uh, Around Halloween time, you can find it. I found it. You can find it at Walmart now. Uh, it used to be only at the at the makeup supply stores, uh, but the the gelatin you can find anywhere that sells gelatin, Jello, glycerin in the pharmacy departments. So it's it's not a, a big expense to do all these. So let's say you're doing your makeup and you're like this, and then you realize, hey, I could be a decaying vampire caught out in the sun. I forgot to go buy fangs or I don't I can't afford fangs these are fake nails you can make fangs with fake fake nails best ones are the pinkies because they're small so I went and cut some fangs out of the nails you want to dry off your tooth uh, if you're gonna do that, I, I don't have any poly grip right now, but I had these poly grip strips, and you just wet them, and uh, it sticks on. So let's try it. Poly grip stick, poly grip strip is not on there. My mustache is in the way. See? Now to give away a little secret, there was a TV show that had a uh, a nighttime version of their day of their regular show where they had vampires on it, and this is how they made the fangs. Uh, you can't see like somebody mustache, but good temporary fangs. 
Um, this poly grip tape is actually not good. Just use regular poly grip. Uh, so you've got dollar store fangs. You've got regular gelatin makeup on here. Dollar store eyeshadows for bruising. Home Depot if you want to make a mold. Um, I would I would not uh, use these on a regular basis but if you're doing a convention and you need scars you need something built up even a you know a vampire eyebrows you could sculpt it and sculpting is you have to have a life cast your face or something that works that way you could do a flat plate mold too for that sculpting with clay going with the silicone caulking mixing it with cornstarch till it's creamy mix you got to mix it really well and then spread it on there and do it in, in multiple layers so that you don't build up too much of a thickness at the beginning and it won't ever dry I mean you can see how ugly the back is because I'm just smearing it on but I got you know a Frankenstein stitches cut a comp I'm sorry this one's a uh, uh, I did it for a skull showing through you got just two other cuts and they work really well for that do you have any questions okay if you want to get into pro professional makeups there's a lot of different makeup stores around usually in LA you can, there's at least two or three big ones um, a lot of them are online you can also do it um, gelatin there's also a higher quality of gelatin that you can get at some uh, chicken feed stores and that's a 500 bloom you can get that at the makeup stores also Oh, I forgot also blood <clears throat> you can make your own blood with clear care or syrup do not use just red you have to add other colors my formula is red blue green yellow and caramel to give you a nice realistic blood the more caramel color you add to it or caramel color whatever you want to say um, when it starts drying it'll look older so that's good for zombies um, this blood is made with dollar store hair gel okay I made it with red and yellow and a little bit of blue and a little bit of green um, and I mixed when I put the green in, I didn't mix it fully it's in there uh, as a kind of it might come out odd also I'm sorry if you're mixing blood red is the highest staining color you want it to not stain as much you add soap and I don't mean bar soap. I use Dawn dish soap. Ivory soap will work. Almost none of the dish soaps will work to, to keep it from uh, staining when you um, when you get the red on you. But let's see. Let me show you this. When you're doing a zombie also, do not cover your face in blood. Do not cover your wounds that you made in blood. That just messes up your everything, all your makeup you just did. Plus, zombies would have coagulating blood or coagulated any blood they have was just from eating people so so here's blood made with hair gel um, this eventually will dry up and they could even scab if you want it to it's gonna crack so we could also just put this in here let's see This also is a little bit easier to deal with than uh, this, the caro syrup or the corn syrup blood because that stays sticky. And I can tell you from experience of being a zombie out in the sun or being uh, working on military operations, corn syrup blood will attract flies. And since this is hair gel, there's no sugar it's not going to attract as you can see and it actually looks pretty good and again like I said after a while this could coagulate dry up and then you'll get uh, scabbing and it's really good also it smells good sometimes but do not use that in your mouth anytime you make blood if you do it out of carrot syrup um, do not add uh, soap to it 
so you can use it in your, in your mouth. If you want it to go on clothes where it's not going to beat up and, and looks like cheap blood, that's where you add soap. But if it's in your mouth, make some that's just edible blood. Um, I mean, you could do. You can also mix other things in it if you want coagulation. You add a little bit of chunky uh, peanut butter into it. Um, I've made blood with uh, polygrip for stuff like this where it gels up and you can make uh, mix it with if you don't want just regular blood you can mix it with other colors you can make green yellow pus uh, anything like that if you want to make old zombie blood add a lot more blue and green to it so it gets darker but uh, this is the color I have I still can't see my fangs there you go. they're still on still work make sure you don't make them too pointed because you'll cut your mouth up um, and that's about all I have for right now on uh, budget makeup I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for tuning in